Hello YouTube viewers and random Doctor Who fans, at long last I am back with a new review and it's of this, the all new 12th Doctor's second sonic screwdriver. And here it is in its box. It's that plastic cylindrical tube design with the orange and purple colour scheme seen on other recent merchandise. We got the BBC and Doctor Who logos across the bottom with 12th Doctor's second sonic screwdriver electronic sound and light effects printed beneath it. The sonic features green and blue modes and also has static, flashing and chase light and sound effects. The screwdriver is displayed nicely through this window which allows you to see it very clearly. As for the rest of the box, it's the usual case of legal guff, but there's also a bit of a write-up on the new Sonic, which you can hopefully pause the video right now, should you want to read it. But anyway, enough about the box, let's move on to the screwdriver itself. Alrighty, so here it is, the new 12th Doctor Sonic Screwdriver, and what a mess it looks. Yes, I'm really not a big fan of this design. It looks far too clunky and bulky for my liking, but then again, that's the prop's fault. We're talking about this and whether or not it's actually a good toy, so let's find out. It certainly looks the part anyway, which is due to the fact the character was sent two replicas to work from, so the result is a Sonic which is damn near screen accurate as you can get. Starting off with the emitter, you can see the large one in the centre with the smaller tubes around the outside. The lens is clear so you can see right down to the LEDs at the bottom. Along the side you can see that it looks similar to the current TARDIS time rotor so I like how it ties in and looks like the TARDIS created it and also the fact that the main body of the Sonic is blue also ties in with that TARDIS motif. And then we reach this colour section where these two silver clamps are positioned. The sculpting looks great and really sharp with the silver hinges and bolts visible on there. However, they just make the Sonic look untidy and I have no idea what their purpose is. If the emitter would have been able to collapse into the handle and the clamps held it in place or something like that, that would have been cool, but as it's a static prop, these make no sense. Another bolt can also be seen on the back. On the front is this large silver dial-like section which when pushed forward or back activates the light and sound features. I really do like this as it makes for a much more elegant way to activate the Sonic as opposed to those tiny black buttons on the previous model. Below this we get some golden rings which have a little bit of paint bleed on there but nothing much overly concerns me. And below that is this silver section with these sort of elongated ovals cut into it revealing the gold beneath it. Four silver struts emerge from this bit and connect into this silver platform near the bottom, which actually really helps to get a good grip on the Sonic as they rest easily in your palm. The bottom doesn't really taper off neatly, instead the Sonic just sort of shrinks down to this very thin silver section with some rectangular patterns cut into it. And finally it ends with this gold and silver stub. And that's pretty much the design of the new toy. And wait, something's not right. Hang on. Wait. There's no legal guff. None. And no big ugly battery compartment either. It's a miracle. I can't quite believe it. They've learned. So, yeah. Overall for detail, it's a great representation of the new Sonic prop. But no legal guff. And no battery compartment. And no screw holes. I think I need to lie down. Anyway, let's have a look at the new Sonic's light and sound features. To activate them, simply slide the silver switch up or down. And as you can see, sliding it down causes the screwdriver to make a very standard sonic noise, while the entire emitter lights up blue. I'm a little disappointed with this sound effect, as I thought we would get something a little bit different. Sliding the switch upwards gives us a similar sound effect to when it was slid down, just on a slightly different frequency. And of course, the emitter now lights up green. I do like that this Sonic offers different colours, which is a nice bit of variety, but of course, there is no red setting. Pulling the switch down quickly twice will make the Sonic give off a fantastic light and sound effect, where the blue lights around the sides of the emitter will spin around or chase each other, while the sound effect is new and fits the light sequence perfectly. Sliding the switch upward quickly twice will cause the sound to give off yet another different sound effect and cause the green lights to pulsate on and off. This is great, but I would have liked the green setting to also feature a chase mode as well. So when it comes to effects, I'm really impressed with it. It actually offers a lot. As I said, there is no obvious battery compartment, so how do you change the batteries? Well, simply take the lower half of the Sonic and twist it slowly, then pull it. This will remove the top section, where you will see a big blue battery compartment. The Sonic takes three button cell batteries, which are fortunately enough already installed in the toy, so it can be played with from the second it's removed from its box. 
So doing a quick size comparison, you can see that this is the biggest Sonic yet, with only the 11th Dr. Sonic being just a tiny bit bigger when in open mode, but you can see it easily dwarfs the 9th and 10th Dr. Sonic. I really think this is far too big for a Sonic screwdriver, and I'd definitely like to see the next one return to a smaller size. People will begin to think the Doctor's compensating for something otherwise. So overall, what do I think of this toy? Well, I may hate the design of the prop, but credit where it's due, this is a pretty awesome toy. Fair play character, you've knocked it out of the park here. The sculpting is spot on with some great sharp detail, and the fact that there's no legal guff or screw holes or a battery compartment visible on it just elevates that. I'm majorly impressed. As for the lights and sounds, they too are fantastic and offer a nice diverse range of effects during play. I particularly love that they change colour and that the lighting sequences from the prop are recreated for the toy too. It is a little long and it doesn't extend but then again those are issues with the prop and not the toy itself. In the end, it may not be my favourite Sonic screwdriver design but this is easily one of the best Doctor Who toys on the market right now and a great return to form for character options. And so that brings us to the end of this review. I really hope you liked it. If you did and you're new to my channel, please hit subscribe for more videos and keep up to date with all my latest news and reviews by liking my Facebook page and following me on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>